Start that thing that you've been in limbo about, have that conversation. You got another chance to forgive somebody. You have another chance to, we can do anything, man. God gave us that. In this episode, we uncovered the stories of rappers who have been entangled in serious criminal activities. From Diddy to King Von and Snoop Dogg. These artists have seen their fair share of controversy. Let's explore the intricate details and the aftermath of their alleged crimes. Sean Diddy Combs, a prominent figure in the music industry, is currently facing severe allegations that have led to federal investigations. These allegations involve serious accusations of sex trafficking, sexual abuse, and rape, which Combs has vehemently denied. Despite his denials, the complexity and severity of the charges have cast a shadow over his legacy. The wave of allegations against Combs began to surface publicly in November of the previous year, when singer and dancer Cassandra Ventura accused him of rape and a sustained abusive relationship dating back to 2018. She claimed that the relationship involved extreme control over her personal and professional life, including physical abuse. Ventura settled her lawsuit against Combs for an undisclosed sum, emphasizing the settlement was not an admission of wrongdoing by Combs, having fired the shots that injured three people during the incident. Mr. Combs endured over a decade of his violent behavior and disturbed demands. For Ms. Ventura, the dark times were those she spent by Mr. Combs in a cycle of abuse, violence, and sex trafficking. Among other violent and unlawful acts, Mr. Combs raped Ms. Ventura in her own home after she tried to leave him, often punched, beat, kicked, and stomped on Ms. Ventura, resulting in bruises, burst lips, black eyes, and bleeding, blew up a man's car after he learned that he was romantically interested in Ms. Ventura, forced Ms. Ventura to engage in sex acts with male sex workers while while masturbating and filming the encounters, ran out of his apartment with a firearm in pursuit of a rival industry executive whom he learned was nearby, demanded that Ms. Ventura to carry his firearm in her purse just to make her uncomfortable and demonstrate how dangerous he is, and introduced Ms. Ventura to a lifestyle of excessive alcohol and substance abuse and required her to procure illicit prescriptions to satisfy his own addictions. There was the shooting of the 1999 Club New York. One of the most publicized events involving Sean Combs that occurred in 1999, Combs and then-girlfriend Jennifer Lopez were involved in a shooting incident at Club New York, a Manhattan nightclub. While Combs was acquitted of all charges, his brother Jay rapper Shine was convicted of assault and attempted murder, having fired the shots that injured three people during the incident. Following the shooting of 1999, Combs faced bribery charges related to the same incident. These charges were based on allegations that he offered his driver, Wardell Fenderson, $50,000 to claim ownership of a gun found in their car. Combs was acquitted of these charges, of course. Over the years, Combs has been involved in various other legal disputes, including accusations of assault. For instance, in 1999, he was accused of assaulting record executive Steve Stout and settled the case out of court. In 2016, Combs was arrested after an altercation involving a kettlebell at the UCLA training complex where his son was a member of the football team. He faced charges of assault with a deadly weapon, which were later dropped. The most damning of the recent allegations came from a lawsuit filed by producer Rodney Lil Rod Jones, who accused Combs of sexual harassment and orchestrating sex trafficking parties that allegedly included underage women and illegal drugs. This lawsuit paints a grim picture of a manipulative environment centered around exploitation and abuse, orchestrated for the benefits of Combs and his associates. Further notice, I would not be performing at any gigs or anything like that um, for security reasons. My family, friends, and everyone close to me just feels like there's a lot of potential threats and everybody's just telling me what he's allegedly capable of and, you know, it's very scary um, for myself and, you know, it has me worried about my kids and, you know, just sleeping with anxiety and, and different things like that. So just moving forward, um, just want to pause on everything until we know that it's, it's, it's clear and safe for me to come back outside of work. I appreciate uh, you all for your love and support and everybody that knows me, etc. Thank you so much. Love.
In response to all these allegations, federal agents conducted raids on Comp's properties in LA and Miami. The investigations are part of a broader federal inquiry into accusations of sex trafficking. The raids signify a significant step by law enforcement in unraveling the truth behind the numerous allegations. Throughout these developments, Combs has maintained his innocence. His legal team has characterized the accusations as attempts by individuals seeking financial gain through damaging his reputation. Combs' firm denials and legal responses indicate his readiness to contest the allegations in court. I'm about to go into this next era of my life, and um, I'm going to be doing a lot of um, positive things, you know, a lot of disruptive things. And everybody knows about everything, you know. I want a deeper connection with my fans. So I came up with this idea. I was going to get a special phone number, and I was going to be able to give it to my family, my fans, everybody that's down with the movements that I'm about, you know what I'm saying? The team love movement, you know, bad boy, you know, black excellence, entrepreneurialism, getting money, um, vibrations, inspiration, and um, just special unique content that I'm going to share on this, on this phone. And also, on top of that, I'm also going to be able to, um, a lot of things I really don't want everybody, like everybody to know about. Um, so like on the King Von, another prominent figure in the drill music scene, had a life marked by both artistic achievements and significant legal troubles. His legal history is intertwined with his music, often reflecting the harsh realities of street life that he and many others experienced in Chicago. Juvenile arrests and early adulthood, from a young age, King Vaughn had encounters with law enforcement beginning with minor arrests. King Vaughn was known to be associated with the O Block Gang, a function of the Black Disciples in Chicago. This affiliation influenced much of his music and personal life. His lyrics often depicted and possibly glorified the gang lifestyle, which included detailed accounts of violent encounters and turf wars. These narratives, while compelling to listeners, also drew scrutiny and concern regarding their impact on youth and communities already struggling with violence. In 2019, King Von and fellow rapper Lil Durk were arrested in connection with a shooting in Atlanta. The incident involved a robbery and shooting outside a popular drive-in, which prosecutors claimed was carried out by Von and Durk. The situation led to a significant legal battle, with both rappers facing serious charges. Von was eventually released on bond and the charges against him were later addressed in court proceedings. But what happened in 2020 was a deal breaker. King Von's death in November 2020 was the result of a shootout outside an Atlanta nightclub. His death not only ended a promising musical career, but also sparked discussions about the cycle of violence. Now, moving to Snoop Dogg, 
Born Cordo Czar Calvin Broadus Jr. on October 20, 1971, in Long Beach, California, he is a renowned American rapper, singer, songwriter, producer, media personality, entrepreneur, and actor. Snoop Dogg faced his first serious legal issue in 1990 when he was convicted of felony drug possession and possession for sale of cocaine. During this time, it was also revealed that he was a member of the Rolling Twenties Crips gang in Los Angeles, indicating his involvement in gang activities, which likely influenced his early legal troubles. In one of his most high-profile legal battles, Snoop Dogg was charged with the murder of a rival gang member who was shot and killed by someone firing from the vehicle Snoop was traveling in. He was defended by Johnny Cotron, and after a lengthy trial, he was acquitted in 1996, largely due to a lack of evidence directly linking him to the shooting. Snoop continued to face legal scrutiny with charges stemming from an alleged attempted murder. Details on these charges are scant, but they contribute to his troubled legal history during the mid-90s. In 1997, Snoop pled guilty to assault charges. As part of his plea agreement, he made public service announcements against violence, which helped reduce his sentence to three years of probation. Snoop publicly announced that he would give up drugs and women, a statement that was seen as an attempt to reform his image and lifestyle. The 2003 civil rape allegation During his time as a guest host on Jimmy Kimmel Live, Snoop Dogg and his entourage were accused of rape. Snoop preemptively sued the accuser for extortion, which led to both parties dropping their lawsuits. In 2006, multiple arrests and bans occurred. First, at the Heathrow Airport, Snoop Dogg and his entourage caused a disturbance at London's Heathrow Airport, which resulted in a temporary ban from British Airways and the United Kingdom. Then he was detained for carrying a collapsible police baton in his luggage, deemed a dangerous weapon by airport security. Then he was arrested for possession of marijuana and a firearm at the Bob Hope Airport. The Tonight Show incident was another arrest for similar charges that occurred after his appearance on The Tonight Show. In 2007, Snoop was arrested in Sweden for suspected drug use, but was released after providing a urine sample. He faced multiple charges in the US for drug and gun possession, but avoided jail time by agreeing to probation and community service. He also faced visa issues, where in 2007, he got denied an entry visa to Australia due to his criminal record, affecting his ability to perform at the MTV Australia Video Music Awards. Then he tried to re-enter the UK. He got initially banned due to the Heathrow incidents. His entry ban was eventually overturned, allowing him to return to the UK for performances and other engagements. Despite these challenges, Snoop Dogg has successfully reinvented himself as a multifaceted entertainer, maintaining a significant presence in music, television, and business. Cause we getting sweated by the police right now, cuz. I don't know what country we're in, but they sweating us right now for nothing. This right here sweat me for nothing. Hold on, hold on, hold on. They just checking us for nothing. What do we have? What do we have? For what? What do we have? Oh, boy, got me in the back of a police car right now in Sweden, cuz. Pulled in over for nothing. Taking us to the station where I gotta go to pee in the cup for nothing. I ain't did nothing. All I did was came to this country and did a concert, and now I gotta go to the police station for nothing. On my way to the police station in Sweden. Sorry about that, all the fans in Sweden. I'll never be back in this country. Y'all can thank y'all police chief and all the people that run y'all police department. It's been real. Thank you, but I'm gone. In the police station doing a report on me, cuz. Profile, racial profile. Came and snatched me out of my car. Brought me down here. I'm in Sweden right now. It's all good, dog. Sorry about that, people. I'll never be back to y'all country. It's been real. What up, though? This is Snoop Dogg. I know a lot of y'all concerned about me. I made it through. They took me down there, made me pee in the cup, didn't find shit, no case, no nothing. But, like Minister Farrakhan say, it's better to be searched and not found with nothing than not to be searched at all. Now let's move to Gucci Mane. Frederick Delantic Davis, known professionally as Gucci Mane, is an influential American rapper whose career has been marked not only by music innovation, but also by a series of legal challenges. Here's a detailed look at his major encounters with the law. The 2001 cocaine arrest. Gucci Mane's initial significant legal issue occurred in 2001, shortly after he embarked on his music career. 
career. He was arrested on charges of cocaine possession, which led to a 90-day incarceration. This early brush with the law foreshadowed a pattern of legal troubles that would interrupt his career. The 2005 murder charge, one of the most critical incidents in Gucci Mane's life, came in 2005. He was ambushed by a group of men during a home invasion, leading to a shootout. Gucci Mane responded by firing his weapon in self-defense, which resulted in the death of one of the attackers. After the incident, he voluntarily turned himself into authorities. The murder charge against him was eventually dropped due to a lack of evidence, as it was concluded that he acted in self-defense, affirming his plea. Gucci Mane's legal troubles continued with multiple arrests for probation violations over the years. In 2010, his disregard for traffic laws led to another arrest, where he was charged with driving on the wrong side of the road, and several other infractions. In a more severe incident, in 2011, he faced assault charges that resulted in his lawyer submitting a special plea of mental incompetency, arguing that he was not in a mental state to participate in his legal proceedings. This resulted in his admission to a psychiatrist's hospital. The year 2013 was particularly tumultuous for Gucci Mane, marked by numerous legal issues primarily around assaults and probation breaches. His behavior during this period was erratic, influenced heavily by his struggle with addiction, which he later acknowledged as a significant factor behind his actions. Later in 2013, Gucci Mane faced serious federal charges for possession of a firearm by a convicted felon. He was found with two different loaded guns on two separate occasions within days. This arrest led to a federal prison sentence, which he served until 2016. His release came earlier than scheduled due to a judicial oversight that failed to account for the time previously served, highlighting another chapter in his fraud interactions with the legal system. Throughout these ordeals, Gucci Mane's career faced significant setbacks, but each time he returned to the music industry, he did so with a renewed finger, continually influencing the trap music genre and maintaining a significant fan base. His legal history, while substantial, is complex and interspersed, with his substantial contributions to music and his personal growth and rehabilitation efforts post-incarceration. What do you think about the impact of these criminal allegations on their careers in the music industry as a whole? Let us know in the comments below and don't forget to like, subscribe and ring the bell for more deep dives into controversial topics. Goodbye!